Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the lectures on chemistry. In this module, we have been looking at molecular spectroscopy. Now, let us get to the last part very quickly, namely qualitative electronic spectra, aspects of electronic spectra. The most important part that I would like you to uh, be familiar with on in the electronic spectra is the is the following that is on the screen called the Frank Condon principle. Please recall that electronic transitions require a lot of energy. We need visible to UV light. Vibrational motion of the molecule, if you remember, is of in the infrared range and rotations of the molecule take place, the change the geometrical orientation of the molecule is even at a much lower energy. One of the most important principles in electronic spectroscopy is that when a molecule is electronically excited from one state to the other, there is very little time for the molecular geometry to change during the transition. You recall that geometry changes in the molecule require molecular displacements relative to each other or orientations relative to each other. All of these things require a much lower energy, take a much longer amount of time. In fact, the frequency when you talk about is a measure of the rate at which the processes take place. So, if you say in the infrared region, molecular bonding, I mean the vibrations take place, the frequency of the infrared light gives you also the time scale. In fact, the inverse of the frequency if you remember has a time unit. Frequency itself is a time inverse unit. 1 by frequency tells you the time scale within which the changes take place. Therefore, if the frequency is very high, the time scale in which things happen is very, very small, very narrow. Electronic transitions take place at very high frequencies compared to electronic, the molecular motion in vibrations and rotations. Therefore, the time scale in which the electronic transition takes place is so much less compared to the time scale of molecular motion. What you see here is a typical diatomic potential energy curve. What I have plotted is the molecular potential energy as a function of the bond length for a diatomic molecule for the ground state and for the first excited state that you see here. What happens is the electronic transitions from the ground state to the excited states takes place vertically. There is no change in the bond length of the molecule during this transition. And if you look at the corresponding graph here, you see these two lines which correspond to non-vertical transitions. If you look at this, this is the molecular the bond length here and here is a slightly different bond length. Such transitions are not allowed. The principle is known is one of the cornerstones in electronic spectroscopy. The principle is uh, based on, I mean is after two individuals who discovered this, James Frank and also E. U. Condon and it is known as Frank Condon principle which by which electronic transitions are expected to take place in such a short time scale that what you have is only electronic transitions which are vertical. We will see more of this later. But as a result of this, you see there are several different possibilities for the molecular electronic excitation, which I shall summarize in the next minute. If the potential energy of the ground state of the molecule and the potential energy of the excited state of the molecule both support bound states, you see that molecule gets excited to a higher energy state. It is stable here, the molecule is trapped in the bound state and therefore, it can emit light and reach the ground state. It is a process called the fluorescence and if it takes a little while to go from one state to the other and then emits light, it 
the light that is emitted is of a different frequency it is called phosphorescence. So different possibilities exist here whereas for example if you have the potential energy of the molecular electronic state in the following way namely the ground state potential energy the bond length the excited state bond length are slightly different the equilibrium bond length in the excited state is here the equilibrium bond length of the ground state is here that is the molecular geometries are different between these two different states then a transition may lead to dissociation if for example the molecule is excited to an energy level as you see in the next graph or if the molecule is excited in this graph to a higher energy level like this this can lead to a transition in one vibrational motion to decomposition. There are also molecular transitions such that the excited states do not have any bound state for the molecule no vibrationally bound states such excitation electronically lead to dissociation of the molecule. So, there are various possibilities in electronic spectra we will look at it more at after we have done some microwave and uh, infrared spectroscopy because electronic spectrum is far richer than any other and also it is much more difficult to understand. We looked at three things namely the three processes that take place in a molecule called emission spontaneous emission spont absorption in the presence of radiation and stimulated emission and we quantified a relationship between these three processes following Albert Einstein's model the semi classical model for the, uh, ra the radiation processes and also arrived at a relation between the radiation processes and the molecular property namely the dipole moment. The second was to look at the absorption as a quantitative phenomenon in relating to the concentration of the molecular species the Beer Lambert's law is a, is a very useful quantitative law valid for small concentrations and also gives you coefficients which are characteristic of the substance as well as the light with which uh, the which the substance absorbs. So a property that can be useful for further studies is the Beer Lambert law and thirdly we looked at very very preliminary qualitative aspects of the electronic spectroscopy. Mm -hmm.